to be involved in so many community events and open doors in allowing myself to learn about other individuals. And it's been amazing because I have the Spanish side of the community that has supported me as well as my mom's side, um, the Indian. And it's great to be able to entwine both ethnicities and cultural groups into one. And I think that is something I'm so proud to have and I'm so blessed to be able to be a part of each of them. That is incredible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always interesting because uh, that's part of this platform, right? It's, it's to, to explore you know, what shapes our worldviews, what has informed, especially for uh, many of us uh, who have uh, an immigrant heritage uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, granted, you know, whether born in this country or born outside of this country, uh, but living here and, and how we sort of bring those different uh, aspects of our, you know, of our well-being and our heritage into uh, various aspects of our lives. Uh, let me ask you this, since you're a registered nurse, let's just get this out the gate because I'm sure people are wondering what your, what your thoughts are about this. What, what do you have to say about the threat from the uh, coronavirus? Uh, the most talked about topic. Everywhere you go, everyone's speaking about coronavirus. Right, right. <laughs> um, honestly, I think it's, of course, it's a very unfortunate case that's going around right now. But I think it's important to educate yourself, be mindful of ensuring how to protect yourself from obtaining the disease itself, making sure you wash your hands, make sure you are covering your mouth. It's just the basic things of not touching your face if you notice someone without washing your hands. Um, but it's out there. You just got to make sure you do the best to educate yourself on how to not have it. And if you do have it, make sure you quarantine yourself as not to inflict that onto someone. So just really just taking care of yourself and educating yourself. Right. Well, that's really well, that's good. really good. I, I'm, I'm sorry, just, yes. sorry, just a <laughs> second I can. That's okay. Um, um, I'm wondering if I'm the wondering echo if is coming from your side or from mine. I could hear an echo. I'm not sure if you hear that too. No. Okay. All right, that's fine now. I can't hear it again. So okay. um, that's good. I just wanted to make sure everything was on point. We've had some technical difficulties, but uh, uh, everything is going. So let me ask you this. Um, I know we talked, and uh, this is something I was really excited to talk to you about because I feel that uh, there is a lot of um, outward uh, viewership of pageantry, but a lot of people don't really know what goes on behind the scenes and, and how it all, what it all involves. So yeah. what, what got you into uh, pageantry? So I actually started my first pageant experience back in 2011. I did the Miss Teen Alberta pageant and I had one Miss Teen Calgary as a title. So I went nationally, um, my first experience ever in Toronto. And then it just opened so many doors. It allowed me to build that self-confidence in myself. I actually met my best friend in that pageant who I look up to and I consider her as my older sister. And you really get to learn more about yourself and you're able to build that self-confidence and work about on platforms that you're passionate over. And then after that, I did another pageant in 2012. But you know what? I did take a step back. I just focused more on school and I thought I was just done with pageants. But seeing a lot of global concerns happening right now and just seeing how heightened social media is and how it influences so many people and there's a lot of mental health concerns out there, I thought it'd be a great opportunity for myself to get back into it because it's something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do Miss Universe Canada. And I consistently told myself, no, I didn't think I would be able to do it, but I did. And it was honestly the most amazing experience ever because you meet women that are so strong, so passionate over a certain concern of themselves and they want to empower other women. They have platforms that they're passionate over. A lot of them have their own nonprofit organization. So it's great to see women that are dedicated to making a difference in the community and it allows you to learn from them and to be able to form new friendships. So that was, I love it. It's an amazing experience. So, so what are some of the, that, that's, that's great. Uh, what are some of the uh, uh, challenges that uh, you, you faced in trying to get into the industry? And then you said you left it for a little bit and then you came back to it. So can you walk us through some of, you know, the challenges that, that, that one would face 
um, doing something like that? So it was a lot about learning about myself. So I needed to make sure that I had to learn how to walk again because I, it's been a long time since you do the runway walk. And I used to do a lot of modeling, but I took a step back from that as well. It's about getting back into shape. So just making sure that I'm ready, I'm active, I'm being healthy again. Um, and it's harder because you see girls that have been doing this consistently for so many years and you're the fresh person that's going out back out there and you don't really know everything because a lot does change and of course practice makes perfect so I'm just going in there honestly like an underdog although I did compete in 2011 and 2012 I definitely did not have the experience that so many of the other women had so it was a little bit hard it was a little bit on my self-esteem but I worked through that and I tried my very best and I think that was what mattered most yeah uh, interesting I don't know if you've seen a video, there's a video that's out there on, um, on, on Facebook. I'm sure it's on many social media platforms, but it's about the uh, Miss Universe, one of the Miss Universes, uh, no, the Miss America, the, the girl that has a military background. And uh, I just watched that yesterday as I was thinking about the show. And in fact, she was talking about how uh, when she started competing, she, she tells the story of how she went back I think it was the seventh, it was yeah. the seventeenth time or, or whatsoever. And I, then, I love love her speech. It was honestly the most admirable and motivating speech that I've heard for so long. And it really tells you that you know what, even though the door closed and you were hearing that no, you still gotta try. And that one day is gonna be the yes that you need. So so um, could you tell us a little bit about the mindset? Because you said you did uh, quite a bit of modeling, and I know that um, what what does that involve? Like, uh, how, how do you? I mean, apart from creating the profile, you know, getting um, auditions, and then you know, once yeah. you're in there, like, like, tell us about some of the mindset um, that 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 you need as somebody who understands themselves and 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 things that you know. I want to try to pursue something in this industry, even though. For you, who is a registered nurse by profession, um, yeah. you know, perhaps it wasn't, and I'm going to ask you, what was, was it your first choice? Like, was it, did you think about it as a career or did you just do it as something that you were interested in? So I actually started off in modeling because it was the first story that kind of opened up for me. I actually always wanted to do acting. That was something I was very passionate over. Um, and modeling just kind of came on its own, but it allowed me to build more confidence in myself. I was very, very shy growing up. I wasn't very outspoken and it allowed me to, you know, be in front of a large audience and modeling is very different in comparison to pageantry, I would say, because mm. in pageantry, when you're doing interviews, you're communicating with other individuals, you're presenting a platform where you with modeling, you're pretty much, I would say almost like a clothing rack. You're you're an envision for it, the artist or the designer itself and you're portraying their outfit on stage. So although you're not speaking, you're still in front of the cameras, you're still walking, you still want to make sure you're not tripping or falling, but it's allowed me to meet some great individuals. It opened some doors for me and I got to, of course, again, meet some incredible people in um, the line of work and make some friends. So. Would, you, would you say that uh, your modeling experience complemented your pageantry experience or um, if you were to if you were to pick between being a, a, a supermodel or <laughs> say you know or say being like you know a world renowned like pigeon like winning Miss Universe uh, what would be your preference? Of course a supermodel <laughs> would be a best. <laughs> I, I kind of thought so but um, I would have to say because of where I am now and where I, the experiences that I've had, I would of course wish that I could win Miss Universe or be able to be a person of a role model to somebody else in a sense of being able to share a platform and be able to speak about certain causes that are happening in our world today. And that's something I'm more passionate about right now currently, but mm -hmm. hey, the supermodel still sounds really great to me. So, <laughs> well, uh, I, 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 I gotta tell you this that you are a winner because you did win the People's Choice Award yeah. and you uh, made it into the top 20. You know, yeah. that, that is a winner, right? And um, 
also, uh, I want to tell you that because of your story, you're going to inspire a lot of other people, a lot of young girls who are thinking about these things, about pursuing a career, but maybe also pursuing modeling uh, without necessarily giving one up for the other. So that's a great thing. Uh, now, let me ask you a difficult question. Um, which is more difficult? Is it modeling or is it competing in a pageant? Ooh, um, I would have to say, I mean, honestly, they both have their pros and cons because with the modeling industry, they're very focused on how you look. Um, if you're able to wear the attires, you're very much in front of the audience and magazines and runway shows. Whereas with the pageantry, it's a full book. You're not just focused on your body and how you look in a picture or on the runway. You are also being compared on stage with how you present yourself, mm. how you're able to answer to a top five question, interviewing with judges, and your platform. So there's a lot more components involved in the pageant. So I would have to say that takes a lot more work in mm. that sense. Of course, there are models that are huge advocates and they have organizations that they speak about and they do events, they do interviews, but as in a pageant, you're focused mainly on these criteria, and that is what will define whether you win the crown or not. Wonderful. Now, <laughs> if there's any uh, uh, young persons or, or mothers or, or ladies watching who are thinking, oh, you know what, I, I might yeah. want to pursue this for my niece, nephew, my daughter. Um, what, what's the easiest way to get into whether it's pageantry or modeling from your view? I would say for modeling, look into agencies. Start mm. practicing in front of a camera, take pictures, and put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of rejection. I think that is the number one thing to keep in mind that you may see some notes, but just remember that you need to keep trying again. And for someone that is interested in pageantry, there are so many local pageants that have open doors to contestants from an array of ages. So just give it a shot, see how it goes. And like we both watched the most inspirational speech given, if you go and you don't win, keep going because that sixth or seventh or 10th shot might be that winning crown. So just give it a shot, sign up. Yes. Don't put yourself down. <laughs> Excellent. Now, let me ask you this. Um, what about, um, what about, I know I was trying to, I was talking about mindset, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess, how did you deal with people who say, you know, doubted your abilities? Because I'm sure there was a lot of people who, you know, said, ah, Alicia, you know, like, focus on this. What are you doing? You know? So tell us a little bit about that. You know, it's hard. Um, especially with social media being such a huge platform these days, it was difficult seeing some of the girls being posted and reposted as the most likely winner, um, especially the girls that have obviously competed more consistently compared to myself. I wasn't very much well known in the pageant industry having stopped doing any modeling or competing. And you also hear people saying, comments like when I went to Columbia for instance um, I read sometimes in the pictures where people are like oh she's not blonde and blue-eyed you know like there's comments like that people are going to pinpoint your physique or she doesn't look as thin as she should be or there's right. so many different things that people put into you and I had moments where I was like maybe this isn't for me maybe I just actually don't fit in the sculpture of what a Miss Universe Canada is or Miss Universe, but you have to reflect that that is one person's point of view and the amount of messages that I would get from people that actually looked up to me and said that, hey, you inspired me to do this, you inspired me to try something new. I think that is something I had to focus more on. And although it hurts to read messages like that and to hear people not actually support you in something that you're so passionate over, you have to understand that there's so many different points of views in this world that you won't be able to please everybody. But as long as you believe in yourself and the people that believe in you guide you, that's all that you need. Right. Um, thank you very much. That is a, that is a, that is a very, <laughs> that's a very good uh, uh, response to that. Now, let me ask you this. Um, you know, your, when you do, when you were doing your, your 
pageantry and also having done some modeling in the past. And also, given that you are a healthcare professional, what, what is your take about, would you say that, you know, being a healthcare professional maybe help you in certain ways in managing all of the other things? I know that, I, I, and, I, and I don't know, but I, wanna, I want you to speak on it uh, I'm, if I misrepresent. But would you say it helped you in sort of, you know, planning your diet? Because you talked about people would criticize and say, maybe you're not thin enough, or maybe, you know, you're not this. So would you say that being a healthcare professional helped you in how you planned, um, you know, you know, whether it's your, your feeding, your exercises, you know, all yeah. the things that, that, that you needed to do to get ready for this um, contest? I wish I could say yes. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> I was working as a nurse before I started getting into the whole health at it. Um, but I think I realized I needed a change in myself because I wasn't as motivated going to the gym. And I mean, for myself, it's so hard for me to just go, you know, it's, you just need that motivation. But I think it just took what motivated me as being as a nurse mm -hmm. is I think working in the palliative care industry mm -hmm. is I realized that I wanted to try Miss Universe Canada and you know it wasn't all about having to portray myself in a certain manner but I needed to know that I had to be healthy I wanted to go to the gym I wanted to eat a healthier diet because obviously what you consume is um, important for your body you need to metabolize the right nutrients so as much as I could say, nursing was the pinpoint of that. I think it was more so of just telling myself I saw a um, an advertisement and I was like, you know what, I can do this. If I put myself to it, I'm going to try it. And so far I've been consistent and I felt a huge difference in the amount of energy I have and how I feel. So yeah, I wish I could say nursing, but I think it was just a flip of a switch. <laughs> no, that's a very good perspective because I think I, I know I, I was wondering, I wondered how uh, that that helped yeah. or did not, you know, in, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things. Right. But, but that's that's really uh, interesting to know. I, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about some of the discipline that uh, you're required to, to have or that that you have to um, cultivate in order to do, do this um, kind of uh, profession, whether it be nursing, uh, working in palliative care, or whether it be modeling, or whether it be competing at the level of a pageantry. So, um, sorry, repeat that again? So I was just saying, can you tell us a little bit about the discipline that you have okay. to cultivate um, in order to, you know, at the same time be a palliative care nurse and also go and compete in a Miss Universe pageantry. Yes, um, definitely a lot of time consumption because uh, involved in the Miss Universe kind of pageant, there was the platform aspect of it. So you had to speak about a charity and I had to work hard towards embodying that, towards working my hours as a nurse, which of course is a tiresome uh, employment. And I just had to make sure that I made a schedule, I stuck to it, and I did the best that I could. So whether that meant waking up earlier than I normally do, because I love my sleep, <laughs> um, <laughs> staying away from all of the sugar and uh, the treats that you'd see all my, I would normally indulge myself in. But it was a lot of self-discipline in that sense. But it helped me. It helped me get to where I needed to be. Right. And I'm proud of that achievement. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, organization or the cause that you were representing on the stage when you competed uh, um, in the pageantry. So we were hand in hand with SOS Children's Villages. Okay. It was an amazing nonprofit organization. I actually had the opportunity to visit one quite a few years back in my university years. I went to Guatemala. So being able to see at hand the difference that you make when you work towards helping these kids that need that assistance and helping allow them to form relationships with individuals that can help guide them. And you hear so many successful stories. There was one individual that got into university and it was all through this organization and they're well-renowned they are all over the world 
and it was great for me myself because it gave me the opportunity to host a multicultural night. So wow. I was able to educate individuals and a lot of our profits actually all went to Nicaragua. And I was given the opportunity to have one of my friends and their grandma actually was involved with the charity itself. So we also got to the first hand knowledge of how much this organization helped other people because you need nonprofit organizations like that. And that's right. I think that was one of the most changing and inspiring thing for me. And that's what I love so much about doing Miss Universe Canada is that you're involved in organizations like that. Right. And uh, are you still, uh, since not competing, are you still uh, working with this charity? Um, I have had contact with some of the representatives. We actually have one in BC. Um, not recently at the current moment, but have been super busy after coming back from Columbia and competing and covering for that. Right. But of course, that is something that I'm looking to do in the future. Right. So I, I know that you're involved in other things too in your local community, including uh, you're very passionate about mentorship. So tell us a little bit about that. You have a, a, a you know, I think it's one uh, girl that you're, you're a mentor for. So tell yeah. us a little bit about, you know, your passions for mentoring. And maybe you can touch a little bit about your own experience with mentorship when you were growing up. Did you have mentors? Um, what kind of mentors did you have? And, you know, so we'd like to hear a little bit about that. <laughs> sure. So I work with a great nonprofit organization. Um, it's known as Big Brother and Big Sisters. It's been the most amazing experience. Um, I get to work with this young girl who's 12 years old and be that female role model to her. So it's nice to see how she feels and how excited she is when we go to events and being able to share that connection with her and that new relationship and friendship where she looks up to me. And I think that is something that is so nice because sometimes not everyone has that. And it's great to have someone that is positive and a good role model for you so you can embody that. And then you also have someone that you can reach out to when you don't have someone. So it's, it's such a great organization. And I absolutely love working with them. And I've volunteered my whole life all the time. And this is the first time I'm working with this organization itself, but it's been great. And as a personal experience, I'd have to say, I know it's so cheesy because people always say their parents, but quite honestly, my parents have been the biggest inspiration because they were immigrants. Mm -hmm. They came into Canada not having anything. My mom actually came here as a young girl and she only had a small suitcase. And growing up, we obviously didn't have all the privileges that a lot of people may have had growing up. I mean, we weren't, of course, on the streets or homeless, but it was hard. My parents did have to work two or three jobs and babysitting is difficult. So I remember as a young kid having to go with my mom while she's cleaning, and picking up mugs from offices um, and doing little things like that. But seeing the struggle that my parents had to go through and just seeing the accomplishments that they have right now and seeing how resilient she was being a female, especially coming to a new country, not having her parents here, not having her siblings here, and working so hard to sponsor them to a new country and working the amount of hours that she did and taking the bus and you know how weather is like from Fiji from an island and coming here and it's winter it's a huge difference yes. but see how successful she is and the life that she's built with my dad especially who also came from somewhere where it's not as privileged as it is to living here in Canada I look up to them and I hope to hopefully make them proud and be as successful as they are well, they must be very <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, uh, so did your, did your parents get an opportunity to uh, go watch you compete, uh, whether here or abroad? My mom has, for sure. My dad, unfortunately, had to work the recent uh, pageant that I was at in Toronto. But my mom has been very much my biggest dad. So she was there with my best friends, actually. They, um, two of my best friends flew from Calgary as well. And it's nice to see because hearing from her point of view, um, I'm out there on stage, but I know she's just as nervous. She's just as scared when she sees me walking across. And she almost says to me that it feels like she's the one on stage also. So she feels everything on the back end of things, but she, she's been the greatest 
support system and I'm so lucky to have her. Uh, I know that there's one question that I think uh, um, uh, 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 people would be interested in understanding. Yes, we know that at the pageantry contest, it's a, a lot of empowered women, you know, yeah. with, with various talents um, competing. How, how, can you tell us a little bit about that? I, I'm, I'm curious to know, um, you put, uh, you know, a, a huge group of, you know, empowered women, accomplished, confident women in the same space for a long time. And I'm wondering, you know, is it always just camaraderie or, you know, is there really fierce competition <laughs> in the background? Are you just fighting in the backstage and just saying good things? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I wish I could say, I mean, actually, I don't wish I could say. I should rephrase that. But honestly, no, there is no hair pulling or hiding gowns or anything like Miss Congeniality in the movie, um, <laughs> which is oddly interesting. But no, the women backstage were the very first ones that, hey, so-and-so needs a steamer. Okay, I'll lend you mine. Or you need help zipping up your dress. Let me do that. And it's honestly very much like that. So I know it's so hard to see that because even myself, I personally, I'm not going to lie, when I first started pageantries, I was very skeptical in that sense because you see so much on movies and you wonder if that's the way women are. And especially in society, people do butt heads with each other. And when there's only one crown, you are expecting levels to increase and you expect people to be upset with one another. And, but no, I honestly have had none of those experiences. You mainly hear, I would say people from outside that are very much involved in trying to pinpoint who they want as the winner or mm. put women against one another, but the women behind the scenes and the pageant itself, they're very much well connected. We are all the biggest supports of one another. If one person's competing, you best believe we're cheering that person on. So, right, uh, uh, that's very, very uh, insightful because I'd seen you made a post about some of the ladies you competed with, and you were talking about how uh, you felt empowered. And and there was one particular one where you were saying, you know, this this girl was your support, and you know, you felt so privileged to have been in the midst of all these empowered women. And so, you know. <laughs> it, 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 it gets us to think, you know, um, is it all rosy in the back? Uh, <laughs> if you're just so, making all this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. Uh, I know you're passionate about uh, girls and women's causes uh, and empowerment especially. Given that, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, the International uh, uh, Women's Month, as I call it, tell us about some of the other causes that you are passionate about. So... Currently for myself, I think I'm very passionate over the fact that as a woman, it's so important for us to use our voices. We're so strong in unity as well. And there's obviously the talks about equality and whatnot and women mm -hmm. being CEOs or being someone that right now, like there's some women that are presidents and, you know, it's just great to see that women are coming out there and they are becoming stronger. And I think that especially being as a registered nurse and working in palliative care, one thing that has enlightened me in that aspect is that life is so short. And as a woman, we have so much that we can say that instead of hiding behind a wall or hiding behind someone, we need to step forward and we need to be outspoken because there's so much that we can do. And right. there's so much out there in the future for us. So, um, being somebody that uh, has an immigrant background, um, what are your thoughts about um, entrepreneurship within our communities? I think it is something we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and I have seen so many business owners from immigrant backgrounds. And I think that is inspiring because you are coming from a completely different country. You're putting yourself on a different soil and you're growing something and you're becoming successful in it. And you hear the stories of a lot of them not having that success right away, but a lot of them don't give up. And I think that is something that we carry in us, that we're very resilient. We came from somewhere and we started to build a life in a different country and we're 
strong and we can bring that entrepreneurship and we can help guide and we can embody other people to say, Hey, I can come from somewhere and I can still build something and I can create something and I can right. be successful. In it. Uh, are there any uh, uh, entrepreneur initiatives of yours that uh, you'd like to share? I do have some things in mind. Okay. <laughs> Definitely some things in the works that yes. I'm excited to gain the gears, but as soon as they start involving, I will let you know. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll bring you back and we'll talk about uh, <laughs> your other entrepreneurial initiatives. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching, I'm here. This is Unfiltered. I'm your host, Chaps McFarlane. Our guest is uh, the one and only Alicia Ortiz. Um, Alicia has a wide uh, experience across modeling, pageantry. She's also a registered nurse working in palliative care. And we've been having an interesting conversation trying to understand that industry and also the industry that uh, she has a career in. So, uh, Miss Alicia, why don't you tell us, I want to ask you this question, and I'm not sure, like, I, I, I'm just going to ask you this question. What would you okay. say is the, um, I had asked this question to one of my uh, uh, guests, and then uh, she had reframed it in another way, but I, I, I'll just ask it. So tell us something. Um, uh, <laughs> what did I want to say? Oh, nervous. <laughs> yes. Um, so what I wanted to ask you was, if somebody were to say, um, Alicia Ortiz, what are the three things that you think they would know right away? That they should think of right away? Um, hmm. A point. <laughs> I would say loyalty. Mm. Um, I'm very loyal to the people that are in my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important for me to maintain that connection with those people. I would have to say family. I'm very family oriented. My family means the world to me, my family and friends. And I would also have to say, hmm. Hey, it's tough. <laughs> hey, th those, those two are pretty good. Those two, those two are pretty good, I, I must tell you that. I would have to say I'm pretty fun. I like to try new things, so I enjoy being out there and meeting new people, so. Fun. Maybe we'll add that as a third. <laughs> Have you been to Fiji uh, or El Salvador? Unfortunately, not to El Salvador yet. That is a place that I do definitely want to go to. Right. And Fiji, I did go there once, but I was such a small child at the time, so I don't have um, as many recollections or memories of my experience. And Fiji? <laughs> yeah, same. Like Fiji, I, it, oh, that okay. was very, I went really, um, I went there years ago when I was such a small child. I think it was around high school or something, but um, my memories are a little bit faded. Tell us a little bit about your spirituality. Are you a spiritual <laughs> person? What? <laughs> and if so, tell us a little bit about how all of that fits into who Alicia is. Ah, um, I do, I would say I'm a bit of a spiritual person. I do believe in um, embodying different cultures and religions, and I'm very open-minded because my dad is Catholic, so I grew up in the Christian school system, the Catholic school system, and my mom is Hindu, so I have adapted my entire life of being able to complement both religions and be respectful to them. And my friends are also from different religions and I'm respectful towards that. So for myself, I think it's being accepting and open to every religion and every culture and bringing all of that together in unity and being a spiritual person in that sense. Are you a political person? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just asking that because uh, I know that uh, um, in your province now, there's uh, uh, healthcare workers are, are really facing, uh, you know, a lot of push, push, uh, a lot of push. But hey, I don't want to put you on the spot uh, to say anything because I know <laughs> it could be sometimes difficult when you're in a when you're in a profession, and you know you, you kind of have to navigate uh, what you say. But I was just interested to find out if you are a political person. I've, of course, I'm following that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it is the most widely spoken about 
concern out there at the current moment in our healthcare system. Um, so I think it's unfortunate, yes. Will I say a lot towards it? Maybe not right now, but I do think it's very important to have our healthcare professionals there. Um, I don't believe so much in the cuts that are being proposed. I think that will be an unfortunate situation, especially as a frontline worker, we're very much on hand with our patients. Mm -hmm. And I believe in quality of care. So that is something that each of us frontline workers carry to our patients. And I think it's important to have as many of us out there to provide that quality of care because coming into the hospital is already hard itself, but not to receive the care that you need to have because there's not enough of us would be sad. Thank you so much. It's been a real great pleasure chatting with you. Um, and I want to give you an opportunity to tell the women out there, our viewers, what is it that you want to say to the world this day before International Women's Day? You know, I this year has been one of the most growing years of my life. And I was unfortunate to have lost two close friends of mine. And like I've referred so often in this show already, being a palliative nurse, nurse you realize life is so so short and I don't think it's hit so close to home to me since losing a close friend of mine and hearing a lot about people that are passing and people that are hurting these days that I'm so firm on telling people to try something new if you are so passionate about something if you have a goal if you want to build on that success for yourself and you don't be scared there's going to be no's, there's going to be rejections, there's going to be people that will turn their back on you or tell you otherwise. And I think it's so important to push yourself out there, whether it's going on a hike, whether it's going on a travel, that experience that you wanted to do for so long. Don't live your day looking for the future, look towards it as the present, because honestly, things can change any minute, any second. And tell the people that are close to you, I love you. Don't say no to people meeting up with you for coffee because that could be the last coffee date you have or you just don't know what happens when you walk out that door. So be mm -hmm. mindful of that. And if I could say anything in that sense, it's just to live your life like it's your last because I kid you not, the amount of times I see the pain that people go through working in the hospital and losing my friend, it's really brought so much light into me that I need to step outside of a box that we all live in ourselves mm -hmm. and just be open, just build connections, meet people, smile, don't put hate in your life, just love yourself and try something new and build that success. And as a woman, feel empowered, tell yourself you can do it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on the show. It has been a real pleasure. Uh, having this conversation with you. I know there is more we could talk about. The time <laughs> is very short. So um, we will undertake to have you back on the show and uh, follow up with you. I know some of our viewers might have questions or they might have things they want to find out. So uh, eventually we'll circle back to you. But thank you so much for taking the time to come out. I know you're a very busy person. Um, and I really <laughs> appreciate you coming on the platform. So have a great evening and happy International Women's Day tomorrow. Thank you so oh, much. Is there a women's I, march in Alberta? I w sorry? Is there a women's march? I, I note that uh, every International Women's Day, there's usually um, a, a huge uh, women's march um, happening across the different parts of the country. Oh, um, you know, I'd be, I'm not too sure. I know we have quite a few events that have happened so far. There's actually a women's event tonight, okay. but as far as the match, I'm not too certain of that. All right. I was just curious to know, because I know <laughs> that there's been various women's match and I know that there's a few being organized around uh, the areas that I am in. And so I just uh, was curious to know about that, but thank you so much, Alicia. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Our guest. Um, Alicia Ortiz has been here with us talking about pageantry, modeling, palliative care, nursing, and just her experiences uh, growing up in this country, having an immigrant heritage. So we really appreciate you sharing with us. And um, I'll talk to you and see you next time. Teal, thank you so much for having me.
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our show today. Um, thank you for joining. Please share our videos, like, and encourage others to join the show next time. Next week, we will have continuing on our theme for International Women's Month. We'll have another um, incredible young lady joining us. Um, she's an actress, and we're going to be talking about a whole range of issues. So please join us uh, next Saturday. You know what time it is, and uh, we will have an impactful conversation. Thank you, and signing off, Chaps McFarlane.